David was punished, forgiven or not. 2 Samuel chapter 10 through 12. We believe God has forgiven, forgiven our sins. Then we question why does God punish us when we sin? Sometimes as we see his punishment or maybe bad consequence of our sins, we doubt about his forgiveness. David was chosen by God and he was given the promise of the Messiah. Everyone, expect, everyone expected him without sin. But he also had a sinful heart as we do. Did God really forgive his sin? Then why did God punish him? In chapter 10 through 12, chapter 10 and chapter 11, we can see two kinds of sin David committed. First one is adultery. And this sin was caused by temptation of desire. And the second sin could be uh, done a willful crime. It's a deliberate de devised plan to kill Uriah. So he did, David did to cover up his sin of adultery. Now, in this stage, David already became a slave of sin. Sinful heart is the source of sin. That means as long as we are alive, our heart pumps out the sinful desires every second. Therefore, we should admit that we cannot fix our sinful heart. Now we better learn how to live, how to manage to live in this sinful flesh without making big mistakes. We learn this from today's message. Adultery was, was the first sin, a sin by temptation. Chapter 11, verse 1. In the spring of the year, at the time when kings normally conduct wars, David sent out Joab with his officers and the entire Israelite army. They defeated the Ammonites and besieged Rapa, but David stayed behind in Jerusalem. One evening, David got up from his bed and walked around on the roof of his palace. From the roof, he saw a woman bathing. Now, this woman was very attractive. David sent some messengers to get her. She came to him and he had sexual relations with her. Then she returned to her home. David was an easy target of sin. He was blessed. He lacked nothing. He was far away from the battlefield. No worry. That means no tension, no excitement in his life. A little bit boring. This is why he became vulnerable to temptation. Remember, when David was fleeing from the soul, always he needed God's help. That's why his spirit was on a lot. But in this year, after everything is settled down, he said he has been on the throne for many years. Then his spirit became relaxed and lose, lost attention. When you have time and money, but life is boring, you will seek something exciting. Addiction to drug or game or Chronograph. Do not seek complacent or relaxed and lazy life. Rather, make yourself a little busy for the Lord, at least for some something productive. When temptation comes, like David's situation, walk away, run away from the place of temptation. You cannot resist, you cannot Keep your sinful desire without burning out yourself because 
your heart also resonates with the temptation. Return to the Bible. Now she returned home, but there is no perfect crime before God. God made, God made her pregnant. Because of first sin of other tree, David became a slave of sin. So he need to cover up his sin. So he killed Uriah. But this wasn't his first plan. Now, let's go through the Bible. Now she's pregnant. What to do? How to cover up the sin of adultery? Now, David ordered Uriah from the battlefield to return to Jerusalem. And he told him to, to have rest with his wife and sleep with her. And then Uriah would think the baby would be his son. You know what happened? Uriah refused to go home and stay at the door of the palace that night. Why? David, David asked Uriah this way, Why haven't you gone down to your house? It's embarrassing. Uriah said, My lord Joab and my lord soldiers are camping in the open field. Should I go to my house to eat and drink and have marital relations with my wife? I will let do this thing. Maybe this Uriah's words, words of faithfulness, convicted David for his unfaithfulness to his Lord God. However, David didn't give up. He's stubborn and he kept trying to cover up his sin. And this time, David made Uriah drunken and asked ask him to return home a second time. But this time also Uriah stayed with the soldiers at, at the palace entrance. Now, plan A failed. Now, what is plan B? In the morning, David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it with Uriah. In the letter he wrote, station Uriah in the dangerous spot and withdraw from him so that he would he will be killed. Innocent Uriah delivered this letter and his faithfulness brought him death. When Uriah's wife, Bathsheba, heard that her husband died, she mourned for him. When the time of mourning passed, David had her brought to his palace. She became his wife and she bore him a son. But what David had done upset the Lord. David didn't want, didn't want to kill Uriah because he was faithful and mighty warrior. But David became a slave of sin and to cover his sin, he deliberately devised a plan of killing Raya. How to, how to escape from the slave of sin then? It's simple. Don't, don't try to cover up your sin. Let it expose. Confess your sin. Then you will be released from the slave of sin. I'm sorry, slavery of sin. It is a shortcut. It is the only way. If not, you want to pile up more sins to cover up your sin already committed. And you will add up more and more sin and you will, be, you will suffer greater, greater burden of guilt. Remember, God is going to someday disclose all your sins in front of all. Now, as Uriah was dead, and Bathsheba became David's wife. She bore him a son. Everything seems fine, but not before God. Verse 27 says once again, 
what David had done, observed the Lord. Now God sent Nathan, the prophet, to tell David how upset God was, he was. And Nathan gave him a parable of the lamb. He said, there were two men in a town. One is rich, the other is poor. A lot of sheep and lambs for this rich man. And this poor man only had one lamb. So he loved this lamb very much, like this lamb was like a daughter to him. Now, when a guest, when a traveler came to a rich man's house, this rich man took the poor man's lamb and killed the lamb and prepared it as a meal for his guest. Now, as David heard this, he became very angry at this man and said, As surely as the Lord lives, this man who did this deserved to die. When David said this way, the Nathan said, It is you. You are the man. And then he announced the Lord's punishment and forgiveness of sin. Lord's punishment and forgiveness? If Lord forgives his sin, why, why did he punish him? We'll see that. This is the purpose of uh, the punishment or like the discipline or suffering. God disciplines David to respect, to make him respect his words. The Lord said, the Lord God of Israel says, I chose you to be king over Israel, and I rescued you from the hand of Saul. I gave you your master's house and put your master's wives into your arms. I also gave you the house of Israel and Judah. All house, all men, all people in Israel belong to you. And if all that somehow seems insignificant, I would have given you much, so much more as well. I bless you with protection and security and even the throne. Then why did you ignore my words? Why have you shown contempt for the word of the Lord by doing evil in my sight? You have struck down Raya the Hittite with a sword and you have taken his wife as your own. You have killed him with the sword of the Ammonites. Look at what the Lord says here. He didn't say, why did you, why did you kill Uriah? Why did you, why did you do such an evil crime? But the Lord says this way, why have you taken my words so lightly, worthlessly? It is not just violating my commands, it is despising me. Now the Lord could like give this punishment to David according to what he done he has done. So now the sword will never depart from your house, for you have despised me by taking the wife of Uriah the Hittite as your own. This is what the Lord says. I am about to bring disaster on you from inside your own household. Right before your eyes, I will take your wives and hand them over to your com companion. He will have a sexual relations with your wives in broad daylight. Although you have acted in secret, I will do this thing before all is real and in broad daylight. You know what happened? But later, his first son, Amnon, raped his half sister Tamar. Like, Amnon's sister, he, Amnon's half sister Tamar. Now, her brother Absalom, another son of David, killed Amnon. Later, this Absalom rebelled against his father David and captured Jerusalem. David fled from Absalom on foot, not on a king's chariot. It was very hastily. And Absalom was devised by his counselor 
to rape, to sleep with David's concubine. So Absalom pitched the tent on a place rooftop, the very place that David's adultery started, and slept 10 concubines of David and brought daylight. Absalom almost became king, but the Lord made Absalom killed in the battle. However, his death brought great sorrow to David because he was his favorite son. All this happened because the Lord wants to discipline David to make him respect his words. David was a man of man of a sinful heart. In order to stay from sin, David should have paid more attention to Lord's words. Even after the adultery, he should be warned by the Lord's commandments and not have killed Raya in some sly way, pretending himself righteous. We have sinful hearts. That's why the Lord gave us his words. He doesn't want us to be slaves of sin and keep adding sins to cover up our sins. The reason we try to cover up our sin is because we don't trust God's forgiveness. So that's why through discipline, through discipline, the Lord let David realize the result of sin and its bitterness. At the same time, he wants to correct his priority so that the Lord's words to be highest priority in his life. That is God's purpose of uh, discipline or say punishment. If you are such a discipline of the Lord because of your sin or your failure or like under God's punishment, admit your weakness and focus more on his words. Now, David heard this. David admitted his sin. Then David exclaimed to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Nathan replied to David, Yes. The Lord has forgiven your sin. You are not going to die. Nonetheless, because by this, by this deed, you have, you have given occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. The son who has been born to you will certainly die. Yet this is the NASB version translation. David was a chosen king by the Lord. Even the promise of Messiah was given to him. Now everyone expected great integrity from David, but he failed. Therefore, the Lord's enemy, Satan, says, God, God, you have chosen a sinner, David, and even bless him. Look at, even in his other tree, you have given him a son. Now, do you approve his other tree? You are not qualified as a judge of the world. Because of this, the baby needed to be died. Then you will say, what about the innocent baby? Well, uh, it's, it's difficult, difficult question because innocent death is another theological topic. We won't talk about it today because text doesn't say anything about it. At hearing of this sad announcement, David prayed day and night without eating, without sleeping. However, God didn't answer his prayer. The baby, the child, died on the seventh day. However, that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that God has rejected David. His covenant relationship is not changed. Verse 24, so David comforted his wife Bathsheba, because the, boy, the baby was dead. He went to her and had a marital relations with her. She gave birth to a son and gave name him Solomon. Now the Lord 
loved child. And sent word through Nathan the prophet that he should be named Jedediah for the Lord's sake. Jedediah, beloved by God. And this Solomon became the successor of David, as the Lord had promised. Despite David's sin, God's promise and grace were not removed from him. Let me close. We are chosen as God's children. We believe Holy Spirit lives in us. But because of our sinful desire, sinful hearts, we time to time commit our common sins. By every time we make mistakes, we, we commit sins, we doubt about forgiveness and we hesitate to come forward God. So, are we forgiven or not? Why does God punish us? Then? Here I gave you four tips how to stay away from sin first. Run away from temptation. You cannot resist it. And don't be an easy target of sin by pursuing easy and relaxed life. Once you sin, don't try to cover up. All will be disclosed to the whole world later. Instead, confess your sin. It is the only way and it is the shortcut to be released from the burden of sin, to be released from slavery of sin and have the Lord's words in your heart. Put the utmost importance in God's words. When He disciplines you, don't doubt about His forgiveness. He's correcting your value system, your priority, your mindset. Remember, His grace and promise one and change. God bless you.